Greetings everyone, welcome to the Untamed Entrepreneur. You join me from I've already forgotten the name. The Ho, Ho Reki Golf. Ho Reki Go Golf, not golf, that's a Volkswagen. Um, in uh, in Auckland in New Zealand. Uh, and I'm here today to interview a good chap of mine. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to the Untamed Entrepreneur. I'm here in Haraku Golf. Hodeki Golf. Haraku Golf, whatever. Um, near Auckland City in New Zealand. Uh, and I'm here today to introduce you to a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Arthur Green, or Art to his friends. Not both his friends. Um, I want to chat to him for a few reasons and introduce him to you. Um, firstly, he's a good friend of mine and any excuse to have a chat with him. Secondly, uh, he's a good excuse to get out on the water. Thirdly, he's um, well. He's just a good bloke, and he uh, he lives his life, I suppose, in the untamed way. We're in one of his kayaks at the moment. Um, I'm wearing his uh, his lovely life jacket, um, and yeah. So I'm wearing kayak. You're going to get on the camera soon. Don't don't rush it. Um, if it about me, right? Um, anyway, so this is Arthur Green. Um, we're going to have a quick chat. It's not going to really follow any kind of script. Um, I've got this fancy iPhone gimbal, whatever the hell it is. Um, so excuse us if he goes out of shot, if I go out of shot, if you can't hear us. Um, this is planned anyway, so anyway, I will now spin you around. Come on, come on. There he is, what a chap, look at that. What a look at. Introduce yourself, darling. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Art Green. Company based here in Auckland, and I'm also. I don't know what, what, how you. Tosser? A tosser. Yeah, yeah I guess so. He, uh, he doesn't want to say because he's too modest, he's a bit of a big dog. Um, he's a bit, of a bit of a celebrity. What was it? B list? C list celebrity? Is that uh, I think I've dropped down to D. D list celebrity here in New Zealand. Um, and um, he's a. Uh, what made you famous, Art? Uh, it's on a TV show called The Bachelor, where I basically went out with about 21 girls, and then uh, they all left. <laughs> yeah, some of them actually, they did actually just leave on their own. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it was a, a really interesting experience, and uh, so I spent about two months filming that, and going through a continuous cycle of dates, double dates, rose ceremonies and cocktail parties. Which sounds great, but it was actually just an absolute mindfuck. <laughs> uh, but we've got two and a half years on and uh, things have worked out really well for me and my current girlfriend who I met on the show. Um, and it's also led to a lot of opportunities in life and in business, which I feel like I've really made the most of um, and continue to do so. Arthur, you're someone who lives life as you want to live it. This is my opinion, so correct me if I'm wrong. From the outside looking in, you follow your passions, your, your life is sort of by design. You very consciously choose the activities you do, uh, the people you spend your time with, really importantly, um, the tasks you perform, um, the hobbies you, uh, the hobbies you uh, do, excuse me. Um, and obviously, for anyone who knows anything about the come back camera, anyone who knows anything about me and my uh, and my mission is to try and get more people to live a lifestyle of that ilk. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you about that and to ask you: Is it a conscious thing that you do? Is, uh, are you aware of the decisions you make as you go along? Um, what sort of processes and steps do you take to make sure that the life you lead is exactly aligned with what you enjoy doing or what you're good at? Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, for a start back when I first met you, and that was when I was managing that gym in Western Australia, middle of nowhere, surrounded by red dirt. Um, and although it was a really great time in my life and I was able to do a lot of personal development, I just sort of figured out then and there that I wasn't really doing anything meaningful. Um, I was really just working to make money and really, uh, well, my, my, my life, you know. And so 
So what I did was I, I had a long sort of think about what I what I was really into, what I was interested in, and that, and that was nutrition. Um, and I wanted to do something meaningful whereby I could help others um, with their nutrition. So that was the first thing that I decided that I, I, you know, my first thing was I decided what I wanted to do. So I came back to New Zealand uh, and I joined in with a company called Clean Paleo. Uh, and we basically, in the last sort of three, and a, oh, last four years, have built up the company uh, from a very sort of small startup making health food products um, to now having entered into some, well, the, the major supermarket chains here in New Zealand and entered into the Australian market, the US market, um, and just about to launch into Singapore as well. So um, it's been a huge sort of journey over the last four years in terms of business. Um, but it's never, it's never once felt arduous or felt like work because it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, yeah, and I feel like I'm really making a difference in people's lives uh, through nutrition and helping them. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's always a risk. Um, I did a lot of due, dil due, due diligence How do you um, say it? before before I, you know, made the final decision. Um, but more importantly to me was that I wasn't too concerned whether or not the company was going to be successful at that stage. Um, some people probably wouldn't agree to that sort of mindset entering into a business, but for me it was more about more about a passion and um, seeing a need for creating good quality products, uh, ones that, you know, were not there in the market. Um, so I knew that it was an exciting opportunity to be market leaders in something. And, and I mean, I, I have been sort of following trends globally and I can really, could really see the way that things were going, especially nutritionally wise. Um, so for me, it was just, it was pure excitement. Um, and I wasn't too worried about looking at the long-term goal, um, but more, but I was just really excited about doing something meaningful and working for myself. Looking back now, I'd say that I would definitely only uh, be interested in investing in something where I would be able to spend my time doing what I enjoy doing. Um, so I think it would be the company or the role would definitely have to align with my own, um, well, my own lifestyle really, and my own interests. Can you expand a little bit on more on the importance of the fact that you are aligned with companies that are close to you and your personality? Have you have you ever aligned yourself with companies that aren't like that, and and has that had an effect on, on how you feel after you've kind of helped promote them? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I got some really good advice very early on in terms of uh, choosing sort of value pillars um, that well, that align with my, my values and to only work with companies uh, and products that are in line with these values. Um, so... And what effect does that have? That, it's given me a lot of clarity. It means that I don't have this uh, tough decision. Um, sometimes when opportunities sort of present themselves to me, I, I have a clear understanding of what ones I should uh, make the most of and what ones I, I shouldn't um, and this has been really useful for me in building a very sort of natural and organic brand that's sort of reliable and trusted and is true to myself because the last thing I, I have done I'm pretty sure I, I've done like one post where it was for a, uh, a beer company and it was just it was not me uh, I didn't agree with um, yeah it just it, it didn't feel right um, and sure, I made some money, but at the end of the day, it just, I felt like I'd been used. Um, sort of, this company had leveraged my own personal um, social media platforms for their own benefit, and I, yeah, I felt used. So, what, what I'd like to interject there, if I may, um, one thing I'd like to stress is that whilst you may be listening to this or watching this and thinking, well, I'm not a social media influencer, um, why is this relevant to me? Um, I'm not going to get paid to do posts for anyone. Um, 
for me that's not really too relevant because uh, the same message applies to anyone who works for a company. If you're in a business that is misaligned with your passions or your purpose or your interests, if they have a different message to you, um, then that could have a similar effect on, on how you feel when you get over work, whether you're proud to, of, uh, proud to say what you do and tell people and whether you're really passionate about it. So for anyone out there who's thinking it's not particularly relevant, have a think about your company and whether it's aligned with what you want to do and your purpose and values. And um, with the idea being that when it is aligned, um, things just seem to fall into place a lot more. Uh, you feel a lot more fulfilled and satisfied. Um... And, oh, I forgot to ask you, what, uh, what score, uh, alignment score did you get in the uh, work-life alignment review? 88. That's a good score. It's not as high as mine, but. Um, <laughs> <It's not> a <laughs> competition. <laughs> everything is a competition. Out there, folks, everything is a competition. I was lucky in that I, I worked really hard and was able to free myself financially so that I was able to take up an opportunity to embark on a career and into and you know start into a business which I was heavily passionate about and so. But I think this, the key is just doing what you're finding out what you're what you're passionate about, and I think the some of the stuff you do, Jimmy, is is really great for figuring that out. Um, Care to expand for the audience? No. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> no, that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. So many do it. For no, me. but I mean, you know, figuring out what you're what you're passionate about, and like we were talking before about how you said, you know, you uh, uh, asking yourself how you feel. Uh, after putting yourself in certain situations or doing certain types of jobs um, and figuring out what actually you like and what motivates yeah. you um, and then figuring out what that is and make, maybe it's maybe it's starting your own business maybe it's working with a company that aligns with your own uh, your own lifestyle and your yeah. own interests um, but whatever it, whatever it is I mean yeah. so would you say that self-awareness is quite an important part of it self-awareness is huge yeah Absolutely. In terms of just knowing, yeah, finding out and knowing what, <laughs> how you feel, yeah, you know, and how certain things make you feel. With with the idea being that if you're if you're not self-aware, if you're not aware of what your triggers are, what your what your interests are, there's no way you can you can kind of take that, learn a lesson, and then and then correct. Absolutely, because I think as you go. so many of us, and I, I'm myself, I'm, uh, I'm no different, you know. You can work away and you just have your head down the whole time mm. and you never once look up. Yeah, yeah. And you never really understand why you might be feeling a certain way. Uh, and you don't question that. You never question these things. Yeah. So I think it's really important to do that. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Green. Uh, apologies, everyone. I am useless at using this thing. It, it does have a mind of its own. It's its, its fault, not mine. Um, we're going to head back now. Uh, it's time for a, a cup of tea and a hot shower. Um, <laughs> Probably didn't need to tell you guys that. Anyway, thanks a lot, together. guys. Uh, what's that? Together, yeah, obviously. Together. Yeah, yeah, big time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in for the next video. Give us a wave. Bye bye. <laughs>